All right, so I had a question come up talking about creating roof tiles. So we're going to do a little experiment here. We're going to use GrabDoc add-on with Blender. I'll turn screencast operators on so you can see the feature I'm using, but not the, the key because I use custom keys. But GrabDoc, take a look. I can set up the scene. This is a free add-on. Um, and so basically when you create the roof tiles that are kind of textured, right? Like they have the little, well, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, they're like a cylinder. And I'm going to change this cylinder to like 128 segments. Probably could do more. Probably do like 256. It's going to be pretty high. All right. We're going to edit mode. Grab half of it. Delete it. Okay. And that's going to give us this. Now I'm going to rotate this while holding control and scale it while holding control. And also, I'm going to be using absolute grid snap. Okay. So this is what's going to happen. We hit Alt Z. We can see I can scale it. And it fits to the grid still and I can also scale it and it fits to the grid still right so we can make something like that now the problem is is our scale is all over the place and the rotation as well so I'm gonna press Control a and apply rotation and scale uh, we can do things like solidifies right and so that I give us some depth on it now here's the thing about that I want the pivot point back here so I'm gonna use machine tools for this I'm going to grab the two outer vertices, shift S, and then hold Alt and two vert. That keeps it from adopting the rotational value of the vertices, so it'll stay at zero um, right here. You can see. Okay. So this is um, basically a little modular piece now because it fits on the grid. So if I pull it up here, hit shift D and hit Y and hold control and shift R, see if we can do things like that. Shift D, X, hold control, click shift R. Right? We can do that number two. We're going to do that again here in a second, but we're going to do it with all of it. So we can do this number. All right, now, when you're creating a seamless texture or material, right, and you go to bake this thing high poly to low poly, you're going to bake it back to a plane. But the thing is, is that if you have like ambient occlusion that needs to be created right here on the sides, you have to create additional elements off to the side. Now, if this is a unique kind of sculpted model or whatever the case, um, you might have to take the whole tile and pull it over and you might get a lot of extra polygons. So you might even just cut it in half and only have like the right side here. Um, same for the bottom, et cetera, et cetera. Now this one, the way we're going to be doing it, we're going to have to extend it, but I just want to kind of get it started here. We're going to turn grab dock off in the viewport. I go into grab dock and checking visible. So it's gone. So I can just press a now switch over to, um, we're going to switch over to individual origins all right that's up here if you don't have that on and so what ends up happening is we can grab all this and rotate it like that now notice it opens up a little section down here okay and it opens up or it overextends over here so that's cool that's not really a great thing necessarily especially if like um you want everything to be perfectly flat that's kind of a little bit of a problem. And now you could try creating things in other manners, such as like using Substance Designer, where you can get more of an orthographic kind of thing going. Uh, but for now, we'll, we'll run with this. We'll fix it later. It's actually not even a fix. You just have to repeat the tiles over. So these pieces, if I select them all, select this, Control L, Link, Object Data, these will be instances now. So if I was to modify one, or duplicate links. So We'll be able to um, modify one and it'll modify all the others. The modifier itself, though, you have to apply it and then apply to all objects. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That might be something you have to deal with. Now, once we go through that process, uh, we can go into things like sculpt mode. Hit R, we can use a remesher if we wanted to. And take it up to a pretty high value. Hold Shift to get smaller increment adjustments. And then hit Control R, and you can see we can remesh that, and it remeshes all of them. Okay, it's a little slow rendering all those wires, but you get the idea. We can now go through this and use things like the scrape tool or whatever um, and start knocking this thing out. Now, it might be beneficial to have a little uh, backplate for this thing as well. So if you were to hit something like, um, or just create a plane underneath it, this might be useful in case there's any holes. But sometimes that causes a weird artifact itself when um, creating a normal map or a displacement or whatever. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you might want it, you might not. And so we can shade these things smooth. You see they all update. Uh, we can add modifier to it, such as like smooth. Uh, bump up the factor, change the iterations. and just get it a little nicer here. 
can over exaggerate this too if you wanted to it probably wouldn't hurt nothing get it nice and uh, soft because what's going to end up happening here is as we go through this process you can see there's a little bit of faceting going on on the edge uh, that'll be noticeable in things like normal maps so if we were to preview we're only going to export a height map by the way but if you were to preview the normal up here leave cam on exit and so we can click that you'll get something like this and that doesn't look very good so trying to soften those out a little bit would be much more beneficial um, in that particular case uh, on the height map this isn't going to matter because we're going to blur it anyway so but this is yeah this is the process this is your high poly basically so you could go through and you can sculpt every one individually if you needed to or swap them out for broken pieces or whatever the case but you're making a seamless material in the rare instance that like you are making something that um, was just offset a little bit like over here let's say we're doing a tile We'll do a tile real quick. Um, and I'll just scale this. And we're going to use this just as a demo. But we're doing some kind of tile. And it's not really on the grid necessarily. But it's like a broken tile or something. Uh, all that matters is that we have the pivot point in a proper position. And we uh, snap it to the grid here. So if we have it all lined up perfectly, uh, we can go ahead and put it on the other side as well. And so this will be contiguous. like. Um, this will transfer over the scene, basically over here later on. And so you just have to lay things out appropriately doing that. And uh, another situation you might run into is when you're working with, when you're working with a, um, like a plane and you want to sculpt this thing and you want it to be seamless as well. Like it's a, um, right, so we want a seamless plane. I'm going to make it, I'm going to scale it up by two and then right click subdivide it a couple times. Okay, so we have this. And so this is going to be our seamless area. If we check it with the grid, we can see. Okay, uh, But we need it overextended on the sides. And sculpting this can be kind of challenging. So let me kind of show you a reason why uh, this is. Because we have to use, um, first of all, symmetry doesn't matter really. It's the uh, tile size or the tile offset here, I think. right? So we tile it on X and Y. Uh, we would lock X and Y as well so that we don't go left and right. It's only working up and down. And so we could potentially sculpt on this. I'm going to use a multi-res. And we're going to do a simple subdivision here. So, or subdivide linear, right? Um, I think it's the one we're looking for. Let's check it real quick. Turn off optimal display. Turn on wireframe. Subdivide linear. Yeah. Okay. So it could be simple as well, I think. But uh, there we go. So... We can bump up the resolution here with the multi-res. And when we go to sculpt this thing, you'll notice that when we have the tiling, well, not dynamic topology, when we have the tiling turned on, it needs to be probably two meters, right? I'm thinking that's what the way this one worked out. Yeah. And so uh, that's just the crease. Let's use clay strips, for example. All right, so now we could actually sculpt seamlessly. If you don't have the X and Y locked, it can eventually um, mess it up a little bit. So if we needed to sculpt seamlessly, we could. A little rough in Blender um, because certain tools won't actually work correctly and it'll mess up your seamless texture or seamless height map or whatever you're trying to generate. So it's um, still advisable to go over to things like ZBrush sometimes because otherwise you run into problems. With that out of the way, though, we got a basic understanding of what's going on here. Some, some ideas to play around with if you're trying to create anything. And this is going to be good for not only these like roof tiles like this, but also walls potentially. And you need height maps. This is the way, this is a way to go about doing it. I'm not going to say it's the only way, but it's a way. I probably just grabbed the whole top section here. Just extend it up. I like to get the corners. Some guys ignore the corners. And they don't put one there for it. But I'm going to pull it up. Because these are all relatively the same and we don't have any have to worry about making things um perfectly seamless necessarily because of the way we're working this would be fun okay. so we can do this number shade it all smooth background plane doesn't matter as much but all right so this is like your high poly so we'll just say this is um our tile set high um, models be a little bit descriptive with it so we know what it is and so we have this that's great we need a couple other things, but before we get to that, this plane underneath, uh, I think I might have deleted. Oh, no, it's still there. 
Um, I have two of them. Get rid of them. Let's get rid of them. We're not going to use them. So not in this, not yet. I'm going to export this as an FBX file. We're just going to say this is um, our roof tiles. Hi, FBX, right? This is the selected objects only. So once we do that, it might take a little second. It doesn't, it's not too bad usually. Uh, the FBX export, there you go. You can see it released. And so that's great. Now I'm going to hide everything real quick and I'm going to create a plane. So this is your default plane, right? It comes with a UV map on it, if you didn't know that. Okay, so it's good. That's all we need. We're going to export that as an FBX selected object only. And so we'll say this is plane and that's it. That's all it is. I'm not going to say anything else. Okay, but I want it to subdivide it as well. So I'm going to subdivide it a few times. Uh, just right click, subdivide the face, and shift R a few times. Something like that. Maybe it would be fine or maybe a little higher. And I'm going to export this as well. We're going to utilize that. So you can see we could do plane, and then we could say this is going to be the um, subdivided version. Selected object only, and voila, there we go. So we can head over to Substance. In Substance, we're going to load up the plane. I'm going to use the Unreal Engine template real quick. Uh, I'm going to switch it down to 1024, though. Compute tangent space per fragment. Voila, there we go. Now we can do the plane. Click OK, and it comes in. All right. And let's just go straight to the point here. We're going to bake the mesh map. And we're going to uh, bake it at 1024. I'm going to turn on a little anti-aliasing for it. It's at 2x. Uh, I'm going to change the max frontal and rear distances here. And this is a good idea to, when we load the high poly here. We can see roof tiles high, right? Um, you might want to do just like a quick preview bake and let it bake and see what happens here. It might take a little while to load in the high, um, but the bake process should go pretty fast when it's uh, such a low resolution. I just want to make sure I have the proper offset for the uh, frontal and rear distance there. And so when this is done, um, it'll be done. It might take a little second to load though for some reason. All right, so now it's baking, and you'll see that it's, um, it took a little while to load actually. You'll see that it goes through it pretty fast. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, but we should be getting the tiles is what, what we're going for, right? Hey, that's not bad. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and rebake this at a higher resolution now because I know it's going to work. We're going to bake this at, um, uh, we'll do a 1024 to match everything. And uh, yeah, so that's that. So I'll go ahead and bake this and we'll resume when it's done, all right? All right, so it was um it reloaded faster this time, so it bakes started baking a little quicker. Won't take too long. Anyways, um basically when this is done, we're gonna have a flat plane. That's what we're gonna have. And it's not all that interesting to be honest when you look at it. And you can see there's some issues here with ray misses, I think. So that background plane would have helped been helpful in that situation. Um but we can see here. Like, yeah, you see that little bit of faceting that comes in, like I said? Like, you have to be careful with stuff like that when you have hard edges and things that can happen. So, uh, not a big deal for us, I think, because what we're going to do is, before we even get started, no, we're not going to do it, sorry. We're not going to do it right now. Uh, I would have to rebake that with more anti-aliasing or fix my model. It's one or the other. But whatever the case, we'll keep going. So, here's the thing. We want to create height on this, right? So we're going to go to this drop down and we'll see here there's displacement. We can displace this, but what it's going to do is nothing. There's no displacement on it right now. And so older versions of Substance, you couldn't bake your displacement. Newer versions, supposedly you can. However, because we are over in um, Blender, we have this setup over here, right? Um, we can Alt H back real quick and we can use Grab Dock. And with grab doc, we just have to set everything up appropriately here real quick. We're going to do a 1024. We could give us an anti-aliasing perhaps. I don't, I don't know if that's necessarily a thing um, for this one. But PNG 16-bit, we could do like an EXR if we really wanted to. But um, PNG 16-bit, all the default settings, auto height for this. There's also a manual mode if you need to adjust it and tweak it manually. I'm going to put it out to the desktop. Okay, and we'll call this bake map. And then we'll... Um, just leave it as that. And then so what should happen is it should put out bake map underscore height. Um, and that's the only thing that's getting exported. So we should be able to 
Just click export, and it might take a little second to render it, but it's doing like a camera projection down onto the surface there. And then the height is actually like a bounding box that determines like it's um, bright and dark values. So it, it doesn't take too long usually, but uh, sometimes it could take a little bit longer than you probably want it to. Baking in Blender has always been kind of just this weird thing. It just doesn't always work out quite that well. But GrabDoc's amazing, so do grab the, the add-on. And uh, when that is done, which it is, we can go back to Substance. Now check this out. Uh, we can add a fill layer. This fill layer, we're doing nothing with this but using the height field. Okay? And we're going to import, add a resource. We're going to import that height map we just exported. It has to be 16 bit, anything lower, it's not going to work well. Okay? And try to use PNG or something losses. But um, you can see we could import it as a texture. We can import it to the project. Import, there it is. Um, it looks like the ambient occlusion was almost a height map, but it's not. And. Um, so we can see we have that. We can drag and drop it in here, and that's going to be our height. Now, notice when we go back to that setting, it now goes up and down, but nothing else happens. Just because it's a plane with four vertices, it's not going to happen that interesting. That's why we made the other plane, so we can go to our project settings, project configuration. We can select that high subdivided plane now. Click OK, and you'll see it comes in. It looks a little bit more interesting now. That's great, except it's not. It's not high enough resolution yet. We actually have to subdivide it. So we subdivide it now. And you can see what's starting to happen here. You notice how sharp it is? And this is why I said we were going to blur it. Because it's this is really janky. It's not that good looking. And so um, what we're going to have to do is take this height. We're going to add a filter to it. Okay. In the filter, you can add a blur, right? I think there's an HQ blur as well. We'll just add the regular blur, though. But we can blur these. And get softer edges on them see that might help out quite a bit especially if we didn't have a, a geek cup texture to begin with and so uh, but overall i think we're starting to get the idea of what we can do with this right like displacements and heights and all that fun stuff it's fun you can you can make some pretty interesting stuff happen and it's also probably a little too strong when it comes to the scale right maybe, maybe a little bit too much maybe something more like that all right so you can do this in blender later on as well with the displacement and uh, but we could texture it now. So if we wanted to create like a new fill layer, and we wanted to make it like some kind of like rustic orange kind of color, something that looks more like a roof tile, give us some roughness. Maybe not worry so much about the height on this one. Metallic is okay, and we're not going to touch the normal either. So we're we're in the process now of being able to like dirty this thing up if we wanted to. We can go to materials, for example. Uh, we could use like mortar, uh, the mortar texture, which is really nice. Wherever it is, I was mortar wall. There we go. Drop it in here. Gives us some texture, which is great. We can use a smart mask. We can do something like uh, cavities dirt or something like that. And then we can um, flip that maybe or adjust it. Let's just adjust it. We're not going to flip it. So we're already getting some results out of this. It's not too bad. And we can add maybe, um, say, another fill layer. And let's make this one just uh, color and roughness. We'll make it a little bit rougher. And the color will make like a, uh, about the same thing, kind of like more of a, well, let's do something more like that. Okay, so when we add a mask to this, we can do, let's see. We could do surface worn, maybe. That might be okay. I might want to tweak that or. I try something different, but yeah, so you can see we can kind of do like a sun fading effect, like solar damage, basically. Uh, I think the color is a little off, so we'll uh, tweak that a little bit. I think a little bit darker, maybe. And if you want, you could always go to the base color and drop the opacity as well. So there's that as well. All right, and um, just good measure, let's go ahead and throw one more material on there. We're going to do dirt. This is something I downloaded, I think, from, um, I forgot which website, but I downloaded it. You can see the dirt texture actually has a height map on it, so it does all that nonsense. Uh, we could turn the height off, and it won't be a problem, potentially, which we don't really need. So uh, we could smart mask it, and we could go ahead and do something like, um, we could just do generic dirt, I guess, and see if that works out for us. Change the balance here. 
Yeah, so adds a little bit more texture to it, perhaps, and a little bit of roughness as well. So yeah, they're starting to look much more believable, at least. And so you could take your time working on this, of course, and adding in little pieces of moss or whatever you want to add into this thing. And really spice it up, you know, make it look a lot, lot, lot nicer than this. Uh, but it's pretty much good to go for the most part. And so we can export this texture. And we're going to send it to a folder on the desktop because I, I like to have these separated usually so we don't ever confuse them. So textures and select the folder. I'm going to use output templates. And I'm going to use the Unreal Engine 4 packed um, preset, but I've had it modified. So I'm going to go to output templates real quick. And if we look at Unreal Engine 4 packed preset here, you can see I've added a couple things in here. So I'm going to redo the height map here just so you guys know what we're doing. Basically, it's a gray, and we use height. And we drag it over here, and we can use gray channel. Boom. That's it. That's all you got to do. And the texture set name is what we're going to use. This is one I prefer using anyways. And we'll change it to height. Okay. And so you can set up your own custom stuff like this if you need to, using either RGB, R plus G plus B plus A. You see what I'm saying? There are all these different little things you can toss into it. That's pretty fun, but you can see our export's going to be now default material underscore whatever, whatever. So I'm going to save these settings real quick. Come up here, and that's because this is not named uh, Roof Tiles. So I double-click it, just rename it Roof Tiles, so one A, and we'll get going with that. So, all right, so now that's out of the way. Uh, when we go back to export, you'll see that our exports are going to be Roof Tile, a one A underscore. Yeah, so... That's all set up appropriately and properly. When we use based on output template, notice our output templates define like PNG, 8-bit, 16-bit. Oh, one thing I didn't do, let's go back to Unreal Engine 4, packed height here, PNG, 16-bit. Okay, make sure that's a 16-bit. That's going to look nicer. Um, that's important. Sometimes it matters. You can see uh, the normal for Unreal is actually an 8-bit dithered, by the way, 16-bit. So. I'm going to save the file. Usually I do something like PNG Painter, something like that anyways. All right, with that out of the way, it's now saved. We can export. It's already going to go to that folder, we know. So export. Let's go back to the other program. We got Blender here, right? And so we're going to save this. Get out of that. That file is saved, so I'm not worried about it. I'm going to create a plane. This is going to be a material real quick. Create new. And uh, use a node wrangler, control shift and T, desktop. We can find our textures. We can only load base color and normal for now. We'll do the uh, ORM and height later. Okay, control space bar, make this full screen. Control X this. So there's a couple things we have to do here to get this all working correctly. First of all, it's using a DirectX normal, so we're going to fix that first. Uh, DirectX normal is really easy to fix by doing a color RGB curves, toss it in here, take the green channel, and then invert it. So basically the green channel is a black and white image, right? And then when you invert it, it's just like pressing Control i in Photoshop. That's what the difference is between the DirectX and an OpenGL normal map. So you can always convert them if you ever download a texture and you don't have an OpenGL one. Um, just invert it this way. Non-color, make sure it's non-color. And uh, there we go. So we can do a texture, image texture real quick. Drop it in here. We're going to load up the ORM and set it to non-color as well. And now we're going to set up a couple other things. We're going to do color, mix color, toss it up here. We're going to do a converter, separate color, and toss it right here. This is going to plug into here. You can also plug this into this if you really wanted to. The red channel goes up here to B. Green channel goes to roughness, and the blue channel goes to metallic because it was a packed map. So we'll have all of our different textures in this one texture, basically. So this is ambient occlusion feeding into the color map. Now when we um, change the mix mode to multiply, we set it to 1, it's done. So it's going to basically like bake the uh, diffuse texture, if you would. And bake the kind of uh, ambient occlusion into the texture, which isn't technically correct, but it works for Blender and it's not too bad. So, um, non color, non color, there, done. So, if we press Z, go to material preview, you will see we have everything set up just, just the way it was. Now, the only problem is, is there's no displacement on this. Now, that's where the issues really come into play because 
Uh, well, you want displacement. So that means the same, you're going to have the same problems as you would in a substance state. You have to subdivide this to get more detail going, first of all. That's, so that's already fun. But um, we also have to use a displacement modifier and maybe even a subdivision modifier. So we're going to do displace first. In the displacement here, you can see uh, we can load up an image texture. We're just going to create a new one. Okay, go down here. You can see the name of this texture, by the way, you probably change it, just say this is roof tiles. And when we go back to the texture panel, you'll see it says roof tiles now. So we can open the actual um, displacement now, or the height map. Okay, we open that up and we get that crazy result there. Let's go back to the modifier. The modifier's texture coordinate is using local. Use UV. That's going to help out a little bit later on, uh, if, because otherwise you're... Um, Displacement shears around or shifts or whatever. And the height the height is too much. So you can see we don't have enough resolution for it. Now, if we use a subdivision modifier, we can do it before and subdivide it up, and we'll get this kind of result going, which is good. Um, here's the trick about this, though. When you are just staying in Blender, if you switch to Cycles, notice that the subdivision modifier, it, it's like this. Well, Cycles, you can turn on Experimental, and um, when you use a subdivision modifier, if it's after the, um, the displace, you'll notice that we get adaptive subdivision. So we get tessellation, basically. It's kind of a weird feature, but it exists. It's there. Um, and if you put it before that, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so this is what we get. Now, now you can start using this texture in kind of like an Ian Hubbard style fashion, where you go around and you can actually work this same texture into other areas if needed. So if you wanted to create like a nice little section here on the edge, uh, you could do that. Or if you want to create individual tiles, you can do that as well. And I'm just going to kind of show you this real quick. And also the subdivision method I'm using, uh, Catmull Clark, use uh, simple. And that's going to keep the edges out like that. Okay, it'll look a little nicer. But you can do other fun things like non-destructive um, methods of working with this. So if I did like an array, let me see, we got the two now. Uh, personally, I like to have the pivot point over in the corner, so I'm going to do a control period real quick. G, Shift, Z, hold control, stick it over here. Let's turn these off for a second. I don't know where the corner button is. Oh, it didn't turn it off. Uh, turn that off. Okay, so let's try that again. And I'm snapping to the grid already. Just remember, I always have this turned on by default. So now it's in the corner at least. We can turn it back on. You can see it does the same thing, basically. Uh, but the whole reason I needed to do that is I want to rotate off of that area. I'm going to use a mirror modifier. So the mirror modifier, um, we could put it above all this, but we'll leave it here for now. Let's see what happens. Uh, this add-on is called the modifier list add-on. Click the little plus sign here, and usually it'll create an empty. There's some settings and properties, uh, the add-on properties that you can adjust so that it becomes like parented and other stuff. Uh, but anyways, this um, this little empty it created. You press R and Z and hold Control and rotate it 90 degrees. Go back to the mirror modifier. You bisect. You can see we can create little corner units like this potentially. We can also try flipping it, and we can um, do things like this. So now we have this going on, which is nice because if we wanted to rotate this on X, you you can see where that's starting to go, right? Like we can rotate on X, hold Control and maybe give it a precise uh, rotational value of like 20 degrees or something. And there we go. And so it's a non-destructive way of working with this thing, basically. And so if you ever needed another um, component later, you don't necessarily need the, um, the mirror anymore. You can get rid of the one mirror. And now you just have a bigger tile section like that. All right. So when you start to get... So when you see all this like this we don't need the array perhaps we can get rid of uh, we'll leave the displace for now the subdivision for now maybe yeah and we could convert it to a mesh even if we wanted so right click convert to mesh so now we got this whole section here i'm going to alt z so i can select through it make sure alt z is on and i'm going to select right to the center control number pad plus to select more and now i can p separate selection so you can strip little sections like this as well if you wanted to. Now, because we rotated this in object mode, you can see we still have the 20 degrees. We can backspace and get rid of that. So if we wanted to try to use this in other manners, we could. Uh, but we might want to model out a different little section using the same textures so that it has a little bit of a unique look to it. 
but that's how you can do those little pieces on the tops of the roof as well. You can also model individual um, tiles, especially with things like Unreal Engine uh, 5 with the Nanite system. You can model individual tiles and lay out the whole roof with all unique tiles, basically. But, or not all unique tiles. You'll repeat, you'll repeat the models over and over probably, but it'll just work out basically. And so whenever you run into situations like this, like we got it going pretty well, um, but there's like this little gap or hole here. You can always make a step, like a stop gap component later on. So like if you wanted to create some kind of like little mesh that goes in this area, you could do that. It wouldn't be a big, big deal. Uh, you'd have to look at the real roof and figure out whether you need, um, what kind of pieces you're going to need for it. And so it's good to download diagrams of um, how they're constructed and things like that as well. But now if you wanted to just barely cover it up, I call them stop gaps anyways, but you can do that. And because we have texture already, uh, if we can reutilize the texture, then do that as well. If I just um, take the top here and unwrap it real quick, go to UV, you can see it unwrap weird unwrap with a uh, conformal. That might be a little bit better. Oh, I still didn't get it. Hmm. I wonder if I scaled it wrong or something. Something's going on there. The holes sometimes will make an issue as well. All right. In the worst case scenario, you uh, project from view, and you'll have to like relax the edges a little bit, maybe. So I don't know why that's geeking up like that. Anyways, uh, but we do have texture to work with, so we're not worried so much about this because we can just, you know, reuse texture somewhere. And including this section here, like we had a seam, we could unwrap. Um, it comes out like so. There you go. We straighten it up. Let's do it this way. And maybe just stick it something like Probably need to make it smaller and stick it on like one tile. Well, something more like that. So it has a little bit of shading towards the bottom. Would be more more ideal. And then that's going to help you start covering up your, your issues there, your gaps and whatnot. Also, the way we did this, I'm not particularly real fond of because I like the origin point usually. Not on the side on these, maybe in the center. So that would be a little bit nicer for me anyways, because when I take this out to say here, and I want to rotate this 45 degrees, now I can press, um, I can go to local and hit R and X, try to uh, match the roof angle here perhaps when I do that. So if I do like a, let's see if I can get a D. I think it's a different angle technically too. But 20 degrees is, what it was and now it's you can see it's like a different angle basically so we'd have to just eyeball it maybe a little or kind of rework that area into a better shape so anyways and you would think like oh no we didn't make it to the end don't stretch it i mean you could stretch it out if you need to but do an array and then uh, set the correct one here so it'd be negative one there you go so you can apply this array later and you could just grab this whole section i'm gonna do a control right click hopefully i get all of it Get the backside. Oh no, Alt Z. I'm just gonna call it real quick, and uh, I'd probably work this edge a little bit later to make this nicer in this area. So I could have stopped and did not delete those little areas there. Anyways, that's just kind of like the start of the whole process. Like this isn't, you know, this is kind of rushed, right? There's when you're doing like an art pass on something like this, you really need to think about um, what it is you need, though. Like if you're doing Unreal Engine 5, then you might want to create, you know, several tiles and then just lay them out individually, perhaps. But if you're doing, a, you know, a game that needs tessellation, this might be a possibility. If it doesn't have tessellation or the tessellation is not going to work well for you, um, you can even use this to create your LODs, for example. Like even after you go through this whole process later on, you can do a decimate. Different ways of decimation, of course. You can just use the standard method where you do like 0.2 and it does a decimation like that. You could use this as game mesh potentially, not really a big deal. Um, that one, in my opinion, is a little bit sloppy, but you can also unsubdivide these in uh, integers of two. So you can just go two, four, right? And you can work these back down potentially as well. Um, it's still pretty dense. This isn't necessarily like super optimized, but 
Um, you'll have to think about these things as you're working with them and figure out what if there's a better way of doing it perhaps because some of these roof tiles honestly you probably just you don't need a lot of those uh additional bases in here perhaps so you could work those out maybe manually later if you needed to or from the start uh, possibly do that so yeah all in all uh, now you have more or less your your roof section started and so you can do this with like patches of um any kind of walls like that have concrete mixed with like plaster things like that you can do all kinds of stuff and just have a lot of fun with it um, it's not a big deal now also keep in mind if you're using substance designer a lot of times you don't even have to go through this whole process because you can just do it all in like substance designer for the most part and so it's still when you're trying to create just pure materials sometimes that's the way to go uh, is working in that software it does take time though it takes uh, sometimes i feel like this is actually faster than doing designer but nonetheless you'll have fun with it learning either one so i uh, hope you enjoyed the video and i'll check you out the next one all right take care